pleasure to welcome in Dusty Baker. This is so exciting. Dusty, the father of Darren Baker, who's not in the lineup here for the second game, but plays second base consistently for the Wareham Gateman. Swung on and missed strike three. Trey Cruz goes down on strikes. Dusty, thanks for joining us. No problem. This young man is throwing the ball. He's throwing the ball very well out there. Uh, yeah, I liked him last inning, and he brought him in in the middle of the inning. And, uh, you know, he got a pretty tough hitter in Trey Cruz, and I, I played against his grandfather. Really? I guess I'm getting older. <laughs> he came up and said, hey, man, uh, you know you know my dad? My dad told me to say hello to you. And I thought it was Jose's son. Well, Jose Sr. Right. You know, who we played against each other. He's with the Cardinals. I was with the Braves. I played against him in Puerto Rico. But, yeah, you know, to see his grandson, he's about 6'2", like 200 pounds. It's a lot bigger than Jose. Swing and a miss. Count nothing and two to Taylor Smith. Well, this is a different perspective than you usually – get a chance to watch the games from. You're usually sitting, you know, situated in the corner in the bleachers. Was broadcasting ever in the cards when you were playing? Were you ever like, you know, when I retire, I'm going to consider broadcasting? No, not really. I mean, we used, to, we used to play games in the backyard. My brother did most of the broadcasting. <laughs> you know, he's, he was, uh, you know, imitating Vince Scully, you know, when we were kids. But, uh, you know, I did work for ESPN, I think, 19... Oh, uh, 2007, I think, and uh, you know that was fun. I mean, that was a lot of fun. It, it was a bit. Uh, it was quite a bit of travel from California, you know, to right. get to to get to uh, uh, you know Hartford, and uh, you know this kid has good stuff. I mean, you know they got some pitchers down here. I was told that this was a pitcher's league, and and it appears to be uh, such. But you know they have some guys hitting pretty good in this league as well. But I think the pitchers are a little bit ahead of most of the hitters. A sky staying in the infield. Closing in the third baseman, oh. Chad Stevens, and he can't make the catch. Nice hustle, too. Taylor Smith digs for second and stops there. A miscue for the third baseman, Stevens. And Taylor Smith is safe with one away. Well, you mentioned the, the pitcher's league, and uh, your son, Darren, is actually one of those guys hitting very well mm -hmm. for, for Wareham. What? What goes through your mind as he either steps up to the plate or he's out at second? Are you, are you more, all right, let's put my coach's cap on or let, let, <laughs> let's put my father's cap well, on? Well, it's a combination of the two. Yeah. You know, I get the nerves of a father, but, you know, like early in the game, he took a 1-0 fastball, and I'm like, oh, son, you got to attack that <laughs> ball, you know? Tap or foul, nothing in one. But, you know, it's been exciting. Uh, you know, <clears throat> I came here last year for the last couple of weeks of the season when, when Darren was in Brewster. And, uh, but, you know, uh, you know, this year he's playing for Wareham, where a lot of his team, some of his teammates played here uh, the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they've, they've done well. Uh, three or four of them have gone on to, you know, to be, you know, relatively high draft choices. And they're doing pretty good, I understand, in, uh, in pro ball. Joined alongside Dusty Baker. Count nothing and two to Baron Radcliffe with a runner at second and one away in the top of the fourth inning. Gateman leading by two. Will Fleming on the bump. Checks the runner at second. The pitch taken downstairs. Runner stays. You know what I'm really impressed with there are the host families. You know how they treat, you know, these young men as if they were their own sons. And, uh, you know, I think that all the parents need to be relieved and, uh, uh, you know, not worry about them. Uh, because uh, a lot of these guys are a long ways from home. Yeah. But, you know, they have discipline in the families. Uh, you know, they feed them. They take care of them. Uh, you know, Jerry Weinstein keeps them busy. You know, they're out here doing community work as, as well as, uh, you know, playing with the kids. And, uh, you know, they work them pretty hard. You know, that's what they're here for. They don't have quite the leisure uh, life that I thought that they would have here. <laughs> and, and, uh, you thought Darren would be on the beach every day. Yeah, I think he's gone to the beach one time. <laughs> we hear you're quite the fisherman. Yeah, well, I love to fish. And I tell you, I was, uh, I was at some of the uh, um, cranberry bog uh, ponds in the back today. You know, looking around, I saw a golden, uh, golden eagle, a big old golden eagle. And, uh, you know, that's my kindred spirit. That's what I was told by the Cheyenne Indian. That's because my name was Brave Eagle. But I spent a lot of time in, uh, in, in uh, Montana. And so, uh, uh, you know, that was a treat. You know, I'd never seen a golden eagle, but I'd seen a, uh, you know, a bunch of bald eagles out where we were. Right. The payoff fouled off. 
I don't know why I'm jumping. <laughs> I mean, you guys got a screen. You got a protective plastic there, we're, and here we're I am. Protected uh, yeah. Did you bring your glove? Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> Where'd that love for fishing come from? Uh, from my dad. Yeah, I was always with my dad. I was the oldest of five. And so we fished, you know, all the time. We weren't fishing for the sport. We were fishing for the meat to bring them home and eat. Uh, you know, now I fish more for sport and some time, for, and some time to eat. Good pitch. Did he go? No, he did not. That's ball four. Two on with one away. And, you know, like I go to a lot of, I, I go to a lot of college games, and they have four umpires. You guys have three. I went to uh, visit our eight ball team, and they only have two. And, uh, you know, that's a lot of work for these guys, especially the fact that they got to work behind home plate, you know, every other day. And so uh, these umpires are actually, you know, they're actually pretty good, you know. New batter, Jackson Coots. Laced out in into gap. right center field. He can't catch and that'll that drop in front of Matt Rudick. One run's going to come home to score. The throw is cut off. Runners at the corners for the Falmouth Commodores, and they've cut the lead to one. Well, you've played outfield. Yes. Would you have gotten to that ball? Uh, probably not. <laughs> In my mind, maybe. <laughs> At what point during your playing career did you say, I want to go into coaching? I didn't really. You know, what happened was, uh, you know, I got divorced, and uh, I was a stockbroker in 87, and uh, that's the year of the crash. And then I was like, well, I don't think I – I caused a crash myself. That's what some of my buddies say. But, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the Giants wooed me and came after me. And I said, I don't think I want to coach. And then uh, Al Rosen, at the time, was the general manager. He said he liked the way I played across the field when he was in Houston. And he had a lot of respect for me. And I didn't even know he, he knew me. And so he says, uh, uh, you know, I think he'd be a fine field manager someday. But I, he told me that he thinks that I'd need to – coach for five years you know to get the player out of me and then five years to the day almost and then I was chosen the manager of uh, you know the Giants but uh, you know I coached uh, for five years I was a first base coach one year and I was a batting coach for four years you know which was fun because I had some guys I could hit you know Kevin Mitchell and Will Clark and Matt Matt Williams and uh, Willie McGee and Darren Lewis who Darren is named after okay and uh, I didn't think I was gonna have a son at that late age and, uh, you know, it was fun. Uh, you know, the big advantage I had <coughs> going into managing uh, was to manage that team because uh, the coach is kind of like an uncle uh, that you can tell anything to. And your dad is, you can tell most things to. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, that's the advantage I had uh, going into manage, you know, uh, to be the manager because I was a coach for those years, with, you know, with some great, great players. So at what point did it become, okay, they kind of wooed me into doing this to, mm -hmm. uh, I love coaching, I love managing the game of baseball? Well, uh, you know something, uh, I was the oldest of five, so I was, uh, I was taught responsibility at a young age. I was in the Marines, I was a guide on, uh, which also taught me teamwork probably more than any other uh, th thing that I'd done in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I had an understanding, I had come from a, uh, mixed society in, in Riverside, California, and then went to all white society where, where my family was the only family in the, in, in this, uh, you know, black family in the school. And so I had a pretty good understanding. I spoke Spanish. Uh, so I had, you know, which I didn't want to speak Spanish. My mom made me take it in school for like four <laughs> years. But, uh, you know, all those things sort of molded me to get along with people and try to get a good understanding of people. And uh, it's still a people's game, you know. I mean, these guys are human. And, you know, they're not robots, they're not machines. And, you know, they have the same problems that, that you and I have mm -hmm. in, off the field. But, uh, you know, you have to put those problems aside when you come out there. And you have to, and I've had some, some great coaches along the way. I had great high school coaches. I had my American Legion coach played with Jackie Robinson, which I didn't know until I got into pro ball. Spider Jorgensen, then I had some great minor league coaches, uh, uh, managers, and I had some outstanding uh, managers in the big leagues. You know, you know Eddie Matthews, I had Clyde King, 
Hard oh. hit, left side, could be two. Flip to second for two. one, turn over to first. Throw in the dirt, picked hey. out of the dirt by Jacob Teeter. Hey, man, Teeter can pick it. Oh, yeah. Oh, he can pick it over. He's, he's one of the best I've seen at a young age at, at picking balls in the dirt, and that saves a lot of errors <laughs> and creates a lot of outs. Jacob Teeter, an all-star for a reason, keeping this just a one-run advantage for the Wareham Gateman over the Falmouth Commodores after three and a half innings. Dusty, it was wonderful having you on. Well, thank you, guys. And Real, I'll see you tomorrow. Really a pre and pleasure. And I got to go home. I won't be here for the All-Star game. So you guys have a have a great time. Thank well, you, sir. Get home safe, Dusty. And, you know, my wife listens to all of your podcasts. Oh, no. That's <laughs> such a mistake. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. You guys, you guys go in places. So you guys just remember me when you guys are famous. <laughs> <laughs> promise? Yes, promise. Okay. Thanks, Dusty. All right. I'll see you Thank later. You, sir. All right. We're not going to forget you, Dusty. That's all right. Thank you. We'll be right back on GBN.